With the latest DLC released, a new patch was also released and in this video we'll see if this patch adds anything new in terms of performance on Steam Deck OLED for Elden Ring. First of all, we'll compare side by side the old patch with the new patch. Then we will see how we can improve the battery life by limiting the FPS to 30. We will go over each preset and at the end of this video we will compare side by side an overclock version of the Steam Deck OLED with a TDP of 20 watts. The game detects the high preset as recommended settings for Steam Deck. At the moment of recording this video the online play was not available but they did actually promise that they will fix this for Steam Deck. So yeah, let's hope for the best. The high preset is a good preset if we target 30 FPS. I do not think we should leave this uh, FPS unbound because the frame time is not very smooth. Still the game feels very good even on high preset. I really do not feel the frame time that much. Checking this side by side we can see that the performance is pretty similar with the previous patch. The game was already pretty smooth so as long as it doesn't decrease the performance I think it should be fine. Yeah, all in all it's very similar so yeah if you enjoy it play it on the previous version then you should enjoy it playing with this new patch One thing that I saw is that this game seems pretty CPU bound in a lot of scenarios. You will see that even on the low preset it will struggle to go over 45 FPS in some scenarios like when we have a lot of enemies on screen or when we see a long distance environment.
even with this many enemies on the screen at the same time it still stays above 30 which is very good and yeah the game gameplay seems very smooth so good job on that front One way to increase the battery life on the high preset is to limit the FPS to 30. This will uh, add a few watts, a few extra watts for you and you will see that you will get maybe 30 to 40 minutes extra playtime, which is really great in my opinion I would say. But yeah, I think that's not really enough so if we want to go even further I think we should reduce a couple of other settings like maybe the f the shadows and the grass quality. I for one always reduce the shadow quality in a game. Usually if the game is not very dependent on shadows, they do not look that much different. When testing the battery consumption you need to wait for maybe one or two minutes before you can see the correct value of the remaining time. So we went down from more than 22 watts to something like 15, 16 watts, which I think is a big increase in the battery life for this game. That was unexpected. Okay, let's now check the low preset, see if it's a lot different from the high preset. And the answer is yes, the quality is quite low now and I do not think the performance is that big compared with the high preset. But yeah, the, the battery life will be 
way better with this preset but again only if you limit the fps to 30 if you leave it unbound then the battery will be pretty much the same and you will maybe gain gain an extra 5 to 10 fps compared to high so not that great as you see the textures are very low quality and uh, the shadows are quite bad if you see in the distance they flicker a lot and that doesn't look great at all so i would suggest you do not go to the low preset at least not for all of the settings for shadows and textures you should at least go with medium The medium preset actually looks pretty good, it's way better than the low preset and it's almost like the high one, still the shadows are flickering a bit but not that much and the textures look quite good, especially on the small screen of the Steam Deck, you won't see a lot of difference between medium and high. Still the performance increase from medium to high it's not very great. The maximum preset is actually quite playable even though it goes be below 30 fps in a lot of sections you don't really feel that when you play on the steam deck so i do not know i wouldn't really 
play with it but if you really want to see the maximum fidelity for this game then you can try it um, what I would recommend for this preset is if you can overclock your steam deck then you will gain an extra 10 to 15 more performance and that would make basically this preset stay above 30 fps for most of the time To be able to increase the TDP, we need to go into the BIOS, to make sure that the PPT limit is 20,000. And then we also need to decrease the CPU, GPU and SOC voltage offset to minus 50. At least for my Steam Deck, that works pretty well. For others, it may not. And then we also need to manually clock the CPU and GPU. I manually clock the CPU to 3900 megahertz and for GPU to 2000. Fortunately, there is currently a bug in the tool that I'm using, power tools, to increase the TDP. And from what I saw, the CPU overclock doesn't really apply. But the GPU overclock applies and the TDP is actually increased quite nicely. So yeah, let's see how it goes. A link to a tutorial that shows you how to be able to increase the TDP uh, can be found in the description. There you will see that to be able to increase the TDP to Steam Deck you will need to a plugin called Decky Loader and inside that plugin you will need to install another plugin called Power Tools. That will actually let you increase the TDP inside the Steam Deck. Okay, so as you can see the left side of the screen shows the game running with a 20 watts TDP and with an overclock for the GPU and CPU and also with an undervolt. As you can see on the battery section, yeah, the battery consumption is pretty high and the remaining time is quite low. So on 51% on for the battery, we get 58 minutes which is pretty not great <laughs> also the steam deck is very loud when overclocked if you check the value for the fan it is quite a big difference still uh, these overclocks for a lot of games can make them playable for example in Alan Wake this adds like 20 extra more performance and at least for the sections where we got 
under 30 fps with the extra juice offered by this 20 tdp could actually play the game quite nicely so it is preferable to be able to do it but i would not recommend do it in every game maybe just yeah if you have some sections which are not playing that great then you can quickly quickly increase the tdp but then i would simply yeah stick with the default one for this game i think the performance increase is like 10 percent or something like that maybe 20 in some use cases you will see that when there are a lot of enemies on screen the performance increase is a bit more but yeah i don't know if 15 percent more performance is actually worth the decrease in the battery life